Welcome to the 2021 Eritrean Festival. I'm a member of the Eritrean Diplomacy Group presenting on behalf of the Northwest Eritrean Seattle team. I want to thank you all for listening today. The title of this presentation is Orchestrated Lies by Wayane. The purpose of this is to highlight some of the blatant lies and deceitful strategies imposed by Wayane in the last 27 years. Here is an overview of what will be discussed in this presentation. The introduction, Algiers peace agreement, deception and blatant lies, twisted mythologies, false news, targets, and conclusion. The focus of this slide is to explain the background of Wayana and their wrongdoings. Wayana is an ideology that started before TPLF inception. Wayana has invested resources and efforts during the last 27 years to destabilize Eritrea, diplomatically, politically, economically, militarily, Migration-wise, security-wise, has done all it can to see Eritrea destabilize, similarly to what was done to Somalia. Wayana is to blame for many problems and constraints Eritrea faced, such as the depletion of our youth, UN sanctions, and investigations. However, in spite of these enormous investments, Wayana failed to draw any benefit, nor were they able to execute any of their goals. Continuing on, this slide will focus on the Algiers Peace Agreement, We'll dive deep into the relationship Eritrea and Ethiopia had while Wayana was in power. Throughout history, Eritrea and Ethiopia haven't had the best connection due to Wayana. The 1990s was a decade of tension and frequent border disputes forcing Eritrea into a constant state of war. In 1993, Eritrea receives international recognition as an independent country. However, the conflict was far from over. In 1998, disputes led to the invasion of Eritrea by Ethiopia the start of an all-out war. In 2002, the Eritrea-Ethiopia Boundary Commission awarded Badme and surrounding towns to Eritrea. Ethiopia agreed in principle, then refused to implement by bringing many preconditions, which led to 20 years of tensions and wars. Thankfully, in 2018, things took a positive turn. The people of Ethiopia elected Abiy Ahmed to be prime minister. Unlike his predecessors, he announced his desire, acceptance, and implementation of the 2002 UN-backed Eritrea-Ethiopia Boundary Commission ruling without any preconditions. The Ethiopian government returned the border town Badme to Eritrea, the rightful owner, along with signing the Joint Declaration of Peace and Friendship, ending more than half a century of tension, gearing the focus on development by re-establishing diplomatic relations by allowing access to roads, ports, and aviation. The peace agreement received international recognition and praise. The international community and many researchers believe that Eritrea is a quote-unquote the one ray of hope in the Horn of Africa. The event was a landmark achievement for Africa. The peace leads the way for a solid, mutually beneficial relationship for the two countries. The following three slides, including this one, will give you an example of the many deceptions and blatant lies told by Wayane specifically Mela Sanawi and Siu Mesfin. First, I'll talk about Mela Sanawi, then Siu Mesfin. After that, the following two slides will be clips of them spewing lies to the public. Here's a public statement from Voice of America, as you can see on the screen. The statement published on October 30th, 2009. I'll read this now. Ethiopia says it has accepted in principle an independent commission's ruling on its border with former Eritrea. Ethiopian Prime Minister Mela Sanawi told Parliament members Thursday, October 29th, the government has accepted the ruling in the best interests of the country. Following the slide is a video of Mela Sanawi contradicting himself. The public statement from VOA clearly states that Zanawi accepted the EEBC with no preconditions, but then he retracts his message in this video by saying he does not accept the ruling as it's unfair, unjust, and problematic. The contradiction is apparent. The subsequent slide is his counterpart Siu Mesfin, the habitual liar. In April of 2002, Mesfin insulted the intelligence of the Ethiopian people and the international community by misrepresenting the facts of the final and binding rulings of the Eritrea Ethiopia Border Commission. He fooled millions of Ethiopians that the case was a victory. Eritrea hit back, accusing Ethiopia of propaganda and branding its claims of victory as a lie. To this day, we continue to debunk the lies imposed by Wayana. 1976 TPLF Manifesto The implementation of this manifesto has two important parts. Redemarcating Ethiopian internal boundaries and acquiring Eritrean land. 
The TPLF manifesto clearly defines who a Tigrayan is, the land that the TPLF considers as Tigray, and the final destination of TPLF. The final goal of the TPLF is to secede from Ethiopia as an independent Republic of Greater Tigray by liberating the lands and peoples of Tigray. Their plan was to create their own country separate from Eritrea and Ethiopia by occupying land from both nations. This is why they refused to give Badame to Eritrea. This slide will focus on fake news on digital platforms. Alula Solomon, the self-proclaimed activist and the digital Wayana social media army are to blame for the misinformation. Solomon is the CEO of the Tigray Media House and lives comfortably in Washington, D.C. He also has close ties with CNN, BBC, Al Jazeera, which is why he was so successful at broadcasting these false claims to the public. Tigray Media House and Dimsi Wayane are two examples of media outlets that specifically target Tigray diaspora youth with material that helps push their misinformation propaganda. Due to ethnic loyalty, many Tigray youths blindly accept this message, false message, and develop a biased mindset. Wayana uses this as fuel for political gains. Wayana pretends to sympathize, but in reality, they are their aggressors. In the next few slides, I will be going over tactics of Wayana lies, specifically restructuring. Restructuring the truth is one of their many tactics used to distort the truth. This is the tip of the iceberg. In this slide, you can see the image on the left was published on June 14th of 2017, and this article has to do with ISIS. Wayana fabricated the image on the right, which is clearly an act of plagiarism and their way of pushing misinformation to the general public. This never happened in Tigray. Here's the third example of restructuring. As you can see here, the photo on the right is the true and accurate article. This article is from Kenya and it was published in May of 2020. The image to the left is false as this was not in Wukro Tigray. The atrocities claimed in this fake article are demonizing. The caption claims Eritrean soldiers killed six members of a family, then tied up the mother to sit with the dead bodies. This is false and inhumane. Wayana used this photo to demonize Eritrea and to mislead the people of Tigray and the rest of the world. What a shame. Thankfully, all of these restructured photos have been debunked publicly. Tactic number three, false information. In October 2020, right before the current war, there was a minor locust invasion in some parts of Tigray. However, Tigray over-exaggerated the severity of the locust invasion by using a photo Kenya published on the right. The photo to the left is the fabricated image. Wayana has done nothing to support the Tigray farmers, but fed them false information. The organization was collecting money from the diaspora in the name of the locust invasion by providing them pictures and videos that were not even from Tigray. Not only do they lie about Eritrea, but they are deceitful towards their people for financial gains. Lies are not limited to politics. It's simply in their nature to be deceitful. Overall, the main goal of Wayana lies is to divide and defeat the Eritrean people by breaking the unity. Eritrean strength and resilience is the reason why Wayana is in shambles. The independence, the flag, the history, the heroism are some of the top achievements of Eritrean people in the past 30 years of struggle an unbreakable bond. Wayana truly thought by attacking these values and legacies, they would somehow put Eritrean people in a weaker position in Eritrea, but failed. Wayana tirelessly worked hard to undermine, insult, and disregard these values and heritage, but continued to fail. To wrap it all together, Wayana's aim was to destroy, annihilate, and dominate the Eritrean people, but failed. Wayana is known for its blatant lies and mythologies. They have done nothing but perpetrated corruption and theft. Wayana spent time, money, and resources to tear Eritrea apart. Eritrea is their main target. Wayana recruited youth from Eritrea, musicians to spread the agendas designed to weaken Eritrea nationalism. However, due to the resilience and strength of the Eritrean people, Wayana is now in chaos. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you for your time.